So we're back and today we're going to be taking a look at a very interesting weapon. The plan is to buy it, max it out and see what it's actually like. Anyway, if you do go to enjoy the video and you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Every subscriber helps and I would really appreciate it. Also, you should leave a like on the video, it lets me know that you actually enjoy the videos and it also boosts the video in the algorithm. And finally, my Discord server is the top link in the description, there's really no reason not to join. Anyway, let's get into the video, I hope you all do enjoy. So the weapon in question is the mighty Ragnarok Axe. This weapon came out in the Crimson Isles update, I've not actually yet used it. Uh, but it's got some interesting stats. So first of all, let's take a look at the stats. Okay, so plus 250 base damage, plus 70 base strength, which is not bad at all. Especially for 400k. It's ability, so the Ragnarok ability. Begin a channel, after not taking damage for 3 seconds, gain 2 times this weapon's strength for 3 seconds. Cooldown is 20 seconds, mana cost is 500. So initially my first thought would be, would probably be to get ultimate wise on there. Having said that, when actually thinking about it, there's a cooldown of 20 seconds. Um, so 500 mana could quite easily be regenerated in those um, 20 seconds. Granted, if you're using other things like um, Aspects of the End, Aspects of the Void, or other things that use mana, then it could be a bit tricky. For the purpose of this sort of experiment, anyway, I think I'm going to put one for all on it, just to see how much damage it could actually potentially do. Sorry to interrupt, but at the moment we're actually trying to beat the population of San Marino in subscribers. Now, coincidentally, the population of San Marino is the roundabouts of YouTube rank. Now, if we actually get to YouTube rank, the plan is to visit San Marino in a video, and we'll be able to claim that we actually have more subscribers and population, and that would be pretty cool. So what I'm trying to say is you just need to make sure that you subscribe to the channel. It's um, quite simple. If you look at the uh, subscribe button underneath the video, if it's red, then it shouldn't be red. So you need to change that. Anyway, back to the video. To be honest, I'm just going to buy the cheapest one. I'm going to buy this one here, 400k. Not too bad at all. Now, I know attribute shards are probably quite important. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm literally just... I'm not going to even acknowledge them. Just purely because the best I could probably do would be... Um, for instance, I don't know, we've got a Ragnar one, so maybe like Undead one. It's just going to be one, it's not going to make a big difference. So we're going to buy a one for all book. Okay, 6.8 million, there we go. We're going to buy a Recombobulator as well. I just accidentally bought two. Okay. Okay, so we're going to buy ten Hot Potato books. And... Um, should I Fuming Potato it? Mm -mm, yeah. And we're going to buy five Fuming Potato books. That sort of hurts. We're also going to buy Wither Blood because um, strength is pretty much everything with this weapon, considering that um, one of the abilities is to basically double your strength for three seconds, so um, not bad. Okay, so we're going to apply the Reforged Stone first, okay, 30k, not bad at all. Um, we're then going to recombobulate to Epic, and we need to power one for all on. Okay, we'll power one for all on as well. And now we need to apply these um, hot and fuming potato books. So that's all of the hot potato books. And that's also all of the fuming potato books. Hmm. Okay. 7 mil for 5 strength. Did say strength is everything. That's technically, well, 10 strength when it's doubled. I mean, that's just, that's just so painful to do. I don't even know why I did that. That was just stupid. To be honest, um, gemstones. Okay, um, gemstones. I mean, we, we can either spend 4.2 mil or 6.4. The way I see it is probably just might as well go for this one. I mean, at least we can always take it off and sell it. I mean, that's good. There we go. Plus another 11 strength. Got a, got a feeling this is going to be a big flop. Okay, 1200 strength. Um, okay, well, I guess we might as well test it. Okay, so if any of you have been watching the channel for a while, you might remember that I did a similar thing with the Raider's Axe. Um, wasn't quite as expensive, considering the axe itself is actually probably paid more for this axe because it's, um, yeah, I think it was pretty much maxed out. Also, you can't put gemstones on it. Um, but it does have a lot of strength. Anyway, we're going to be doing a little bit of a damage comparison. Um, we're going to be testing out this, um, this Raider's Axe as well. Also, this uh, Livid Dagger. So it gives it a bit more of a... A real comparison. So we're going to be using this level 100 legendary Ender Dragon, and also this um, this Necron set with this uh, Tarantula helmet should be interesting. So first of all, we're going to use our Raider's Axe. Um, we're doing 168k damage, which for a Raider's Axe is um, I'll take it. And as for the Livid Dagger, 310k damage. Got a feeling we're probably going to struggle to beat that. Um, 620k in the back because of the ability. And as for the Ragnarok Axe. 301k, okay, that's actually very, very close to the Livid Dagger. Um, 
Nice. Okay, now we've right clicked, it's casting in one, and okay, we're gonna do 436k, okay? Better than the living dagger. And, um, I mean, cheaper as well. This is actually really good. I mean, obviously, it's back to normal now, but I'm actually quite pleasantly surprised. Now, the obvious drawback to this weapon is it, it can't be dungeonized. Something else you have to consider is that. Number one, you can't gemstone this Raider's Axe. And number two, this Livid Dagger only has... Something else you have to consider is that um, this Livid Dagger only has a fine gemstone on it. Um, comparison to this one. Nevertheless, either way, they both do very similar amounts of damage. Obviously, the Livid Dagger and the Ragnarok Axe both have the benefits, I guess. Livid Dagger obviously has the back hit, 100% attack speed, and so on. And also 100% crit chance, which is a nice bonus if you don't have it. And then the Ragnarok Axe obviously has the... Um, the doubled strength increase, for, um, which is very, very nice. 400, what is it, 430k or something like that. Obviously, that doesn't have to be a back hit, that's just a straight up hit. Now, what I would say is I've spent around about 40 million coins on this axe. Um, obviously, if I was to try and sell this, I'd, I'd never get that back. In comparison to this Livid Dagger, which is like, probably about 24, 25 mil at the moment. Not really worth it in terms of value for money, I'd, I'd probably say. Um, but nevertheless, it's um, like I said, I'm pleasantly surprised. I didn't think it'd do as well as it actually did. Anyway, that is the comprehensive review of the Ragnarok Axe. Comprehensive used pretty lightly. But anyway, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you do leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.